Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the second and final session in the Information and Hiring event for those navigating reentry series. Today, we will be hearing from 10 employers hiring for positions across multiple industries. Each presenter will speak for approximately five minutes to give you some information about their company and will highlight the job openings they currently have. After presentations have concluded, we will then be transitioning into small group discussions with employers. Small group discussions will be held as one continuous session and you will be able to move freely from room to room. Today's session is being recorded and will be made available on the Illinois WorkNet YouTube channel for you to refer to later. Now, I am pleased to introduce the Illinois Department of Corrections Reentry Coordinator, Jennifer Parrick. Jennifer, are you available for a few opening remarks? I am. Good morning, everyone. I want to say thank you for joining us today, and I'm super excited about the collaboration that's happening here to provide opportunities and bring us all together. So uh, I hope you enjoy your day. I hope you find it to be uh, worth your time today, and I am super hopeful that this day will result in job opportunities for all of you that have joined us today. I want to say thank you to all of our employers. And I want to say thank you to our elected officials and uh, Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership that has joined us and everyone that has worked hard to put this event on IDS as well. So enjoy your day. Best of luck. And uh, we're super excited. This is actually happening. Uh, this is our first for Department of Corrections as far as putting one of these workshops, workshops on. So we are hopeful that it is super successful and it is a benefit to all of you. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Jennifer. And one thing that I would like to note for folks that are on the line right now, just real quick before we delve into our presentations, uh, you'll see on the screen here, if you have not yet downloaded the most recent version of Zoom Client for Meetings, you may find that you may need to do so when we reach that breakout rooms portion of the event. You can do so at zoom.us slash download. I'll throw that into the chat here momentarily, just so you have it easily accessible. The reason why that we ask um, you do so is just because it, it will allow you to utilize the breakout rooms features a little bit more uh, seamlessly or smoothly, if you will. It'll allow you to be able to move freely from room to room, so on and so forth. Um, so just something to be aware of if you're finding you're having difficulty accessing those rooms, moving room to room, that might be the issue for you. So just wanted to make you all aware of that let you have an opportunity. If you need to leave the session to download that, you can absolutely do so. We'll be monitoring the waiting room. So if you do leave to download that, uh, we'll be sure to let you back into the session here. So thank you, everybody. Okay, so without further ado, we'll have our first employer presenter uh, here today. Mindy, I do believe we have you slated to present for Elior North America. Are you available to present? I am. Excellent. You can begin whenever you're ready, Mindy. Perfect, if you go to the next slide here. Um, PMC is the business that we have in Berkeley, Illinois. We are a manufacturing and distribution center. So we have a manufacturing plant in Berkeley as well as a warehouse. So we have um, a lot of different options in terms of positions, but really what we do and most of what we do in Berkeley is provide meals to our K-12 business in the U.S. And so it's, you know, prepackaged meals that get delivered across the U.S. that's supporting our K-12 business. Um, further down in the presentation, you'll see some of the other businesses that we support, uh, but, but in Berkeley, that's where the majority is. So uh, if you would go to the next slide, please. This is just a look at our plants. And I wanna show this because it's a cold environment. So I want everybody to know going in before they get there. Um, our cold environment, it's usually somewhere between, you know, 35 and 40 degrees um, because we are dealing with, you know, frozen food and frozen meals and things like that. So this is, this is what it looks like um, in our plants. And we have, you know, just a bunch of different lines across and they all have a different function and they all provide different meals. So if you could go to the next slide, please. This is just uh, different types of, of options that we have. So I know I talked a little bit about our K-12. Some of that is the meal in the compartment kits. We also do those for emergency meals. So during COVID, we had um, homeless shelters, you know, any, any other shelters that we provided meals for. We have some senior meals, which mainly go to our Meals on Wheels programs. 
we have some retail meals that we provide, and then we do kind of some standards that that are throughout. Um, but but that's just a variety of what we do. You could go to the next slide, please. This is just talking a little bit about our emergency meals. So um, during COVID, we provided 500 emergency meals for food insecure residents in New York City. And that was one of our major accounts that most of that came out of our plant that we have in New York. Um, but we also provide meals for hurricanes. Uh, if there's a hurricane and there's shelters, we, we typically um, provide meals for those, any of the fires that had the wildfires that happen. Um, so really any natural disaster, we have options and, and opportunities for, um, for any emergency meals that way. Next slide, please. And one of one of the things, all of our positions we have are going to be full time. So we are first and second shift. Uh, so they come with a full benefits package, medical, dental, vision, 401k, paid time off, any of those things. Um, but really what we focus on is we focus on our, our commitment to our employees, our commitment to our clients, because a lot of the clients that we do provide meals for, we are one of their only um, standard and, and meals that they can provide on. Sometimes it's, you know, a daily basis. Sometimes again, it's, it's those emergency meals, but, but that is our biggest commitment is to our clients just to make sure that, that they understand. And they know that, that we understand we, we are kind of their, their food security piece. So, um, we do, we are very passionate about making sure that we have all of our meals provided in a timely manner without fail. Um, next please please. I, I just want to leave um, a little bit of how to apply. We have a website, so anyone can certainly go to the website. You can also stop in at our plant, which, you know, you can see right there, we're on St. Charles Road in Berkeley. We have somebody who is available to do walk-in interviews and, and help and assist with onboarding Monday through Friday from nine to three. So Maricel is, is always available to answer any questions. Um, if anyone has anyone that they know or think might be a fit for any of our opportunities, we have hourly opportunities as well as into management positions. So uh, we have a, a bunch of different opportunities from production to warehouse to logistics, transportation, we have driver positions. Um, and then we have any of our supervisor and management positions on top of that. Um, starting pay will depend on which shift and which position. If it's first shift for a production worker, it's going to start usually at about 1380. Um, second shift for a production worker is 1580. And those are our base kind of entry level positions. So anything else um, is on top of and up from that wage. But that's that's the kind of base starting wage to come in. We do have accounting positions. Mm -hmm. And, and we have some customer service positions that are remote positions. Um, and, and so there's a lot of opportunities and some, like I said, most of them are gonna be at the plant, um, but, but not all of them are. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, thank you for that presentation, Mindy. And I just do wanna reiterate if uh, there are any other questions that come to mind for Mindy, um, you know, while other presenters are presenting, Jot those down, take mental note of them. Um, you will have an opportunity after all employers have presented to join again those breakout room sessions that we referenced earlier. You'll be able to meet with these folks, ask the questions that you have, and hopefully lead you to your next job or career opportunity. Thank you so much, Mindy. Much appreciated. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our next employer today uh, that is slated to present is MBP Emper Enterprises. Excuse me. Uh, I don't believe we have, unfortunately, that employer rep on the line, uh, but I do want to go ahead and give um, any other folks that might be here on behalf of MVP an opportunity to uh, say a few remarks. So again, if you are here on behalf of MVP, feel free uh, to announce yourself and again, give a few remarks regarding your organization. If you are joining via telephone, you'll want to be sure to uh, press star six to unmute yourself. We'll give them one more moment here. And again, uh, if you are interested in any of the positions that are open and or available with MVP Enterprises, I have listed our employer contact here on the slide. Uh, again, I am recording the session, so if you need to go back and refer to this, 
uh, we will have this uploaded to the Illinois WorkNet YouTube channel again within 48 hours of the conclusion of this event. Next up, we have the OSI group. Uh, Maria, are you available to present? And Maria, I see you're on the line. You'll need to unmute yourself to be able to again present. And one final time, Maria. If you are on the line, which it looks like you are, if you're able to unmute yourself, uh, please do so so you can present. Okay, it looks like we're having a little bit of technical difficulties with Maria, so apologies there, folks. Again, I have listed Maria's contact information. You will see right there uh, her email. And also a website link you'll see there as well to the career site for OSI group. So um, if you are interested in any of the positions that they do currently have available or you have any follow-up questions that you'd like to go ahead and ask, feel free to jot that information down. Again, I'm also recording the session here today. Um, you can follow up with those folks as you see fit. Uh, we will, in the meantime, seek to troubleshoot Maria's um, audio difficulties here and have her up and running for our breakout room session. Our next employer here uh, is South Holland Manor. Again, uh, Constance, are you on the line and available to present? I know we did have Constance at one point. She might have um, unfortunately fallen off. So we will keep an eye out in the waiting room for Constance. If she does rejoin, we'll be sure to uh, cue her presentation up here um, and make sure that you folks are able to see it. My apologies. Our next employer that is slated to present is the Flying Food Group. I do believe we have Helen on the line. Helen, are you available to present? I know we did have Helen on the line at one point. My apologies, folks. Um, looks like she has unfortunately fallen off as well. So I, again, will keep an eye out in the waiting room for Helen. If she does rejoin, we'll be sure to put their slides back up on the screen here. I will keep this up real briefly so you can see here some of the positions that they do have available and what the pay range or rate is for those positions. Again, just want to reiterate that I am recording the session here. So um, if there's any of this information that you would like to go back to and refer to uh, prior to sending any sort of applications out, uh, you're more than welcome, obviously, to refer back to the video at a later date. And next up, I do have Verizon slated to present. I am pretty sure that we do have Jorge on the line. Uh, to present. Jorge, are you available, sir? And I do see Jorge. Yes, good afternoon, line. everybody. Just allow me one quick second. Yep, no worries, Jorge. Thank you for that. Yes, hi, good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, Verizon Wireless uh, information uh, that I'm gonna go ahead and present here. My name is Jorge Hernandez. You can go on to the next slide, please. Basically our agenda is um, what we're looking for, a couple of introductions here, why I work at Verizon, what we'll be doing as far as the customer service rep, and then some of what we're looking for, the application process, how to interview and be successful, and basically hear what you know uh, our employees have to say. Next slide, please. So I am, again, Jorge Hernandez. I basically take care of Northern Indiana, uh, Chicago, The Loop, um, and then some of uh, the outskirts of it, like uh, Lincolnwood Mall, 
for example, the Brickyard is another one, Harlem and Irving or Six Corners um, over on Irving, Milwaukee, as well as Cicero, and then um, some of the South locations. I do have a Cardinal Park that takes care of more of the Northern locations. His name is Scott. He was basically looking over like Schomburg area or as far as Crystal Lake and all the way up into Wisconsin. Uh, I oversee 52 stores. This is all in retail uh, and retail opportunities. Um, next slide, please. So why Verizon? Uh, basically, uh, you know, we're looking for individuals that are looking for growth opportunities. Uh, in this position, you definitely have the opportunity in the year to look into different facets of uh, the company. You don't have to stay in retail or you could work within retail. Positions for management positions do pay 50,000 plus plus incentives and commissions, okay? Uh, we definitely connect with customers. We believe in customer service and the experience. We are a very collaborative and uh, inclusive environment here where we definitely believe in diversity. We have a very good company reputation. Our benefits are far away, uh, are far from none, available for you the very first day that you do start. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so what you will be doing is basically um, customer service, customer relations, product knowledge and consulting, and addressing customer certain, uh, concerns and sales, okay? So basically in the cusp of understanding the product, which we do train and it is a pay training, um, creating the ultimate environment for the store experience, uh, actively listening, of course, to the customers and being sure that you're able to deliver a good customer experience, creating personal connections. We do definitely look at our retention. It's not just about the sale. We are looking at opportunities here with feedback of the customers to ensure that we're doing our job. Being very passionate and understanding technology is another good outlook and unlocking customer confidence. Next slide, please. Okay, so as a rep, um, as a sales rep, basically Verizon Wireless um, is uh, looking um, for you to get involved with uh, addressing customers' concerns. Uh, resolving their issues, first uh, come resolution, uh, making sure that we're queuing in uh, customers that arrive to our store, being very prompt. Uh, and then um, through all that, you're gonna provide customer uh, information with their products, solve their issues. It could be a billing issue. It could be an issue with uh, technology or their accessories, or they're simply coming in looking for a plan um, or their new customers. Next slide, please. Um, so what we're looking for, this is basically it. All you need to do is um, have a GED or high school diploma, one more year of experience in customer service, um, and it doesn't need to be consecutive, it's just customer service, willing to work evenings and weekends, and if you do have a, a associate's degree, even better, or customer service and sales experience, and I'm so sorry that the format is off on this slide. I had just updated and I'm looking at it right now. It's uh, kind of uh, all over the place. But for the most part, definitely the first three things that we are looking for is a high school diploma, uh, one more year of work experience uh, within customer service and the willing to work weekends and holidays. Bilingual is definitely an asset that we do look for as well as a skill set, and that's additional pay. Next slide, please. Okay, so basically, again, the requirements um, is what I've ex uh, explained, the expectations. Uh, again, making sure that we're uh, working within this realm. Um, the schedule, uh, we do work weekends and holidays. We do have schedules that are available for 24 to four, 28 hours part-time. Mainly right now, we are looking for 40-hour full-time work. We have a lot of positions located in the Chicagoland area, Millennium, Lincolnwood, the Mag Mile, Brickyard, Portage Park, Norwich. Um, and we also have positions that are currently posted for Wheaton, Naperville, and Aurora. Uh, and... Um, there are other locations as well up north that we are hosting for like Bloomington or Bloomingdale, Bloomington, Illinois. Um, it's touchless. Uh, we believe in COVID um, uh, vaccinations as well are required for this position as well as a background in order to qualify for the roles. Next slide, please. Okay, so it's very simple. Go to our website online at verizonwireless.com forward slash careers. You create a profile on our website, identify the position that you want to go for. Mine particularly are in retails. There are job ID numbers. You submit your application and create a profile. It's going to ask you to complete an assessment. Uh, we've done away with the behavioral questions, so it would be a lot easier for you to qualify. It should only take you about 30 minutes. 
once you're done with qualifying for the role, um, it is an in-out process. So try to apply as soon as possible. You would get contacted by me. We would go over some of the position and make sure that you did qualify. Once you do qualify for the role, I'll pass you over to the hiring manager, dress professionally, be sure that you understand behavioral questions and be prepared. And I will definitely give you a reference tool for that. Once you complete the HR, um, the HM interview, which is the hiring manager, if you are chosen, basically there is a process. And again, that process is just to pass the background and be fully vaccinated by your start date. Next slide, please. So the success to interviewing, research our company, know what the job opportunity is and what you're getting into, the products and the services. Communication is very key, making sure that you are available. Uh, don't be that person that leaves your voicemail full, of course. We do contact. We have a high volume. We will go on to the next person, but I will monitor to ensure that you're not overlooked. Uh, check your emails and your spams for any type of invitations. We are a modern company, so we do invite through email. Um, through a system that we have here that will invite you to our interviews. Um, dress business casual, business professional, and have a great personality. Be very confident. And then answering questions, just take a moment to think of your response. Uh, remember the STAR method, situation, task, action, result. If you do not understand what that means, please look it up. It's definitely a good opportunity for you to educate yourself, not only for my positions, but any positions that you are interviewing as well. Next question, please. Or next slide, please. <clears throat> Okay, so why do you want to work at Verizon? Well, benefits begin day one, okay? Medical, dental, and vision, uh, we pay at $17.55 plus commissions, averaging about anywhere between $45,000 um, to about $50,000 for, for our positions, okay? Vacation, personal days off, and company paid holidays. Up <laughs> to three weeks of vacation, we offer four days of personal and then vacation for the holidays. Gosh, that's about three weeks of, or a month worth of paid leave, I should say. Definitely could take advantage. Uh, pay training, 100%. Uh, you will receive the base salary and the commission. And we also offer a 401k that we match at 6%. Uh, employee discounts for your phone services, it would be reduced to 50%. So if you have phone services with Verizon Wireless, you will only pay 50% for your phone services. Uh, in addition to that, you also have tuition assistance that we do offer every year. Um, until you graduate with a master's, as long as it's in the realm of um, our scope. So if you're trying to be a doctor, not so much, but if you are looking for like business administration, information technology, all that good stuff, we will help with assisting in tuition. Um, you also have the opportunity to grow within the company. Uh, there is parental leave if you're expecting or adapting. Um, and I think that pretty much covers uh, our benefits. Next slide, please. Okay, so, you know, just some of the uh, feedback that we do have from our employees that joined our team, uh, obviously great benefits. We are flexible. Remember, we are available seven days a week. So you do have a flexible life. Uh, we do believe in uh, growing. So if you're going to school, we will work with your school schedule as long as it aligns with the, uh, the company needs. Uh, great work and life balance. You know, you'll be able to leave work, uh, still have time for your family or what you need to do um, in regards to your livelihood. Uh, be very enthusiastic. Individuals do find it great to work uh, with us. We do look for part-time workers or workers that are, you know, let's say, for instance, if you worked in hospitality um, and you need a second job, we definitely look into that and are flexible. If you're going to school, very flexible. If you're that person, that single parent, mom or dad that needs that job, again, we're very flexible. So there's a lot of uh, great opportunity here with Verizon Wireless, uh, with the pay and uh, the locations. Uh, in addition to that, remember, after a year in your position, there is growth, um, and um, you could definitely maneuver within different facets of the company. Uh, that's pretty much it. Next slide, if anyone has any questions. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. I do hope to meet with you. Thank you so much for that presentation, Jorge. Much appreciated. Again, if you do have any questions for Jorge regarding any of the employment opportunities that he covered, at Verizon, please plan to stick around for the breakout rooms portion of the event where you'll be able to meet directly with Jorge, ask any questions that you do have, and again, try to um, kind of forge that connection to hopefully land your next job and or career. Thank you so much, Jorge. Our next employer presenter today is the Chicago Transit Authority, Lindsay and or Melinda, are you available to present? 
Uh, yes, we are ready. Fantastic. You can begin whenever you are ready, Lindsay. Thank you. All right. Sorry, I had a, a moment with my video there. Um, well, welcome, everybody. We are here to talk a little bit about the CTA. I'm sure if you're from Chicago, you're all very familiar with the CTA. Um, and so I'm going to speak a little bit about the HR um, opportunities. And then Melinda is going to speak a little bit more specifically about our second chance program in just a moment. So without further ado, we'll get started. Go ahead, the slide. So just a brief CTA overview. At our organization, we have approximately 10,000 total employees. Um, we have both union and non-union positions. So an example of a union position would be our bus operators or a bus mechanic. An example of a non-union position would be someone like an HR assistant or somebody in our communications team. So we have a, a balance of both. We serve Chicago and the 35 area suburbs through 130 bus routes and eight rail lines. And we have locations around the city. So our main location, our headquarters is located downtown at 567 West Lake Street. But we also have bus garages, nine rail terminals and shops all around the city. So you know your work location will be determined by the job that you would be interested in applying for and ultimately receive, and then also the manpower needs of that specific job as well. So sometimes you know, sometimes you don't, um, but we'll make sure we get you to where you need to go. Next. So we have a lot of different career opportunities. Um, like I said, with 10,000 employees, you gotta imagine there's a lot of opportunity at CTA. So our biggest and most visible careers, of course, come from our operations departments. Um, so that includes bus operations. Um, again, the folks you see operating and driving the buses um, and rail operations. So the people that you see driving the trains, um, people you see on the platform, our customer service assistants who are assisting customers. Um, we also have programs in maintenance. So those vehicles are both our rail cars and our buses need to be maintained and kept up. So a lot of opportunity there. Um, infrastructure is our team that covers uh, power and way construction and engineering. So I like to think of them as the folks who um, build and maintain the, the structures that the tracks or that the trains run on specifically. So there are track workers and our flaggers. A lot of our trades are, are included in infrastructure as well. Next. And then some of the departments that you might not think about at CTA, we have um, a large legal team. So we do hire attorneys and legal assistants and paralegals. Um, we have a huge technology team to support the multiple systems and communication tools that our operators need when they're in the field and that our employees use on a day-to-day -day basis. So things like our camera systems. Um, you see a gentleman at our control center. That's kind of the the, um, the headquarters um, of, you know, if there's an issue, they're helping manage that from a centralized location. Um, so there's a lot in technology as well. And then finally, we have a lot of administrative jobs. So positions in things like finance and human resources, communication, safety. So some of the behind the scenes roles um, that you might not think about when you think about CTA, but things that are really crucial to the day-to-day -day operations of the authority. So again, there's a lot of different opportunity. Um, some of our more important careers, of course, are ones I mentioned already. Um, the bus operators, we are always hiring for bus operators. We are always hiring for bus uh, mechanics. We are always hiring for customer service assistants. So some of the, those are some of the roles that we, um, we call them mass hire roles, and we just are always in need of people to fill those roles. So um, we can go on and I'll tell you how to learn more about those careers. So our, all of our jobs, all of our open positions can be found at transitchicago.com slash careers. Um, on that page, we'll post all of our available jobs. Um, you'll know when the post expires, you'll know what the salary is, which I think is really nice. I, I know personally, when I was looking for a job, I noticed that not a lot of employers post those things up front. And so I always appreciate that CTA just says, this is the salary or this is the range. Um, so you'll kind of know, you can kind of have an expectation of what you would get paid coming in. Um, but like I said, all of our jobs are posted there. We usually post jobs on Fridays, and then typically they're posted for about two weeks, um, unless it's one of our mass hire positions, again, like bus operator or customer service assistant. Those two are kind of uh, posted year round. Next. So it's really easy to apply at CTA. Again, it's the same website as that list of careers, transitchicago.com slash careers. 
once you get there, you'll click on the job you're interested in. Um, you will fill out, your first step is filling out a profile and that is just something that you do one time. So you'll fill out demographic information about yourself. You'll do that once and then you can apply to whatever job you're interested in. And then if you apply for additional jobs in the future, you don't have to do that profile again, unless you, know, you move and you have to update something, but otherwise it's kind of set for you. Um, you will also submit then the application for any particular job you're interested in, and we will require you to submit a resume. So when you're thinking about that resume, um, I know that that can be kind of nerve wracking for some people, um, but we just really wanna know um, what experience you bring to the, to the role, how you meet the expectations, the responsibilities that we lay out. Um, if it says something like customer service in the job description, we wanna know on your resume, how you have customer service experience. Um, and so it's really just a way for us to kind of know and be able to screen for things that we're looking for. So definitely submit a resume and make sure you're tailoring it for the specific job that you're applying to. Next. Okay, that was super brief, um, but we only have a few minutes. So if you do have further questions about CTA, uh, we can answer those in the breakout room, but I am gonna hand that over to Melinda to talk a little bit about the Second Chance Program. Good morning, thank you, Lindsay. I did see a question in the chat about um, hiring ex-felon. So I'll talk a little bit about the Second Chance Program with CTA. So this program was established in 2011. The program goal is to uh, give re-entry community an opportunity to be in a 12 month training program with CTA. Uh, you get professional development, you have mentoring and also networking opportunities. This is a 12 month program again, that is geared toward the re-entry community. Uh, so a question also was asked whether or not all backgrounds are open. For this program, yes, we do consider all backgrounds with this program. Next slide, please. So this is just a brief overview of the program. So right now we are looking to provide 315 full-time temporary employment opportunities. Again, the word temporary because it is a 12 month training program. Um, there are several positions that we're looking to uh, fill. That they are cleaning CTA buses, trains and rail stations. One of the things that Lisa stated earlier is that there are a lot of positions that work behind the scenes. And these are one of those positions that are essential workers for CTA. So the program again is a one year opportunity. You work eight hours a day, you're guaranteed 40 hours per week. There is no overtime in this position. Um, you pay $15 an hour. Mm -hmm. Some of the benefits of being in the program is that you get employee riding privilege. Yes, your CTA badge allows you to ride CTA bus and pace for free while you're coming back and forth to work or when you're not at work. You have union membership dues, and you'll also be in a program that is nationally recognized as a model for program success. It is one of the largest program of its type in the country. This year, our program just recently partnered with City Colleges of Chicago, Olive Harvey, to offer our participants free of charge an opportunity to take their CDL permit. So this training is available to our participants after they have been in the program for about 60 days. Instead of going to work every day, you will go to Olive Harvey class, you will be paid, and then you will sit for your state CDL permit, which we will pay for. So those are some of the benefits of the program. Because it is a training program, um, there are no health or vacation days, because again, it's a training program. Next slide, please. This is The next slide will show you how you can apply for the program. So twice a month, we have what we call an application workshop. And this slide will be available at the end of the presentation today. When you go onto the link, you will be asked a couple assessment questions. And we just want to make sure that this is a right fit for you because working for CTA, you must have flexibility and especially with this program, which means that you must be able to go to any one of our locations that Lindsay spoke about earlier. So again, you will go into this website, you will complete an assessment, you will then be invited to one of our information session and we will move you along in the process. This again is the second chance program. Thank you.
Fantastic. Well, thank you so much to Lindsay and to Melinda for your presentation regarding CTA. And again, uh, if you do have any questions for those folks regarding anything that they covered here today, again, please plan to stick around for that breakout rooms portion of the event where you'll be able to meet with them and ask any further questions that you do have. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Melinda. Our next presenter will be covering uh, the Chicago Cook Workforce Partnerships Construction Initiatives. I know we don't have Shoshiwa on the line on the line today, but I know we do have Pat Moore. Pat, are you available to give a few remarks regarding the program? Yes, I am, and thank you so much, um, Daniel. This is Pat Moore. I am a business relations specialist with the Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership, and I just want to say greetings and thank you to all of our employers and to the um, very enthusiastic job seekers who are on the line. Thank you so much for coming and we wish you all the best in your employment opportunities. Today, I wanna to share a little bit about the partnership and one of our initiatives I think would be most in, mostly exciting to you and that is our construction initiative. So I am representing, so she was Shields. She was unable to attend today. So I'm gonna kind of just briefly go over it. For those of you who are not familiar with the partnership, we are the Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership. We're an umbrella um, uh, organization and we provide the funds for through federal funding and through uh, private resources to help us to reach communities and individuals that have been impacted by COVID and those who are in areas of um, disadvantaged opportunities to present you with opportunities to meet with the employers, to find opportunities and also to look for um, career opportunities and career advancement. The partnership, um, again, we have 10 American job centers. We have um, more than $300 million worth of federal funds and private funds. And we have served over 70,000 uh, individuals. And to that number, 3,000 of those people have found opportunities in construction. So I think that's also something that's uh, very, very much encouraging. Let me tell you just a little bit about that. We work with the um, state of Illinois, the tollway. We're working currently with CTA, who's, who's one of our host uh, employers today. The Department of Transportation, CDOT, the city of Chicago and many other employers to um, recruit and place individuals in the construction sector. And as you know, you look around Chicago, there's so much construction going on, whether it's the airports or the Obama Center, or just uh, revitalizing our neighborhoods. There's a lot of opportunity in construction. So the construction that we do and, and, and planning that we do for that is to get people involved in apprenticeship programs and other training programs through the Department of Labor and the apprenticeship trades that get you ready for these opportunities. So we'd love to talk more about that to you. I think that most likely I do see yes, you will see in the slide that Daniel put up that uh, Sochi's information is there. We'd love to connect with you and connect you to opportunities within construction. So use that as a springboard to connect with us. Have a wonderful day and everyone, I hope you find some good opportunities with the employers that we have today in presentation. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you so much for that information, Pat, and again, uh, as Pat uh, just mentioned, you'll see Shoshiwa's uh, contact information on the slide there. So if entering the trades um, and more specifically uh, CCWP's construction initiatives program is something that may be of interest to you, feel free to reach out to Shoshiwa using that information provided. If you just wanna take a look at the program and maybe what it entails, again, you'll see there's a website link there you can also use. Um, to check out again the construction works program um, again and see if this is something that would be the right fit for you. Thank you so much, Pat. Much appreciated. With the conclusion of Pat's remarks here, we're actually at the conclusion of all of our employer presentations for today. Um, so what we'll go ahead is just jump right into the breakout rooms procedure for you folks and then we'll open up those rooms so you can start the conversations. Again, this slide should be familiar to you all. Um, if you do not have that most recent version of Zoom client for meetings downloaded, you may have, again, some issues joining rooms, moving freely from room to room, so on and so forth. If you're finding that that is 
um, a problem or an issue that's coming up when you're trying to join those rooms. Again, uh, it could be this issue right here. Again, you can um, download that most recent version at zoom.us slash download. This next slide here is just kind of a basic instructional slide that'll show you how to uh, join a breakout room session. You'll see that first screenshot there. It's just a screenshot of the Zoom toolbar. Now, if you're already looking for that icon, you won't see it because I haven't opened up those rooms yet. So just be aware of that. But if you're joining by a laptop, desktop, something similar, uh, that icon is what you will see when I open up those rooms. What you'll do is you'll just click on it. It'll open up what you see in the second screenshot there, which is just a window with a complete listing of all the employers that we have on the line. You'll see there room one, two, three, four, et cetera. That'll just be the name of the employers that we do have joining us today. Off to the right-hand side, you'll see that red circle there on that screenshot, it says join. You'll just click join for whatever room you'd like to join, and then you'll be automatically redirected to that session. Now, to go between rooms, you'll just rinse and repeat that same process. So you move your cursor, should bring up that Zoom toolbar again. You'll see the breakout rooms icon. That window will pop up and you'll click join uh, for the next employer that you'd like to meet with. Of course, uh, we would highly, highly encourage you to meet with all of the employers that we have on the line today because even if on its face, there's opportunities that um, you know may not directly appeal to you. Again, most of these organizations have multiple positions that might fall in line with your skill set. So please don't overlook any of the employers that we have on the line today. Please plan to join with all of them and meet with them and discuss the opportunities they have available. One other thing to know, if you're joining by a mobile device, so let's say tablet, uh, cell phone, something similar to that, you may not see the breakout rooms icon in the toolbar directly. Uh, you may have to go off to the right-hand side. You'll see here on our screenshot, a uh, tab that says more. It should be something similar on your mobile device. Again, when I open up those rooms and you click on that more tab, should bring a drop down menu or window, if you will, that'll have a listing of various other features that you can use. About halfway down, you'll see an option for breakout rooms. You'll click on that. It'll bring up the window in our second screenshot here again, have the listing of employers. Off to the right hand side again, you'll just follow the same process. You'll click join to join a room. And then again, you'll rinse and repeat that same process to be able to move freely from room to room. Uh, I will have this slide back on the screen when we open up those rooms for you to refer back to. Again, here, uh, just a basic overview of what to expect. Again, we'll have an employer rep in each room with a volunteer for basic troubleshooting purposes. Um, Initially, we did have 45 minutes to set aside for this session. I do believe we're going to probably um, minimize that to about 30 minutes. So do expect 30 minutes for our smaller group discussions um, to take place. As you'll see there, the last bullet point that we've already covered, you'll be able to move freely uh, throughout all the employer rooms that we do have available. You'll be able to unmute yourself. You'll be able to turn on your camera uh, when you do enter those rooms. And then just a few ground rules here before we kick things off. Again, just be mindful of the employer's time. Once you've asked your question, received your response, please be sure to mute yourself and allow your fellow job seekers that same opportunity. Again, we encourage you to share your video on camera. Obviously, unmute yourself, speak directly with those folks, but please just keep things respectful and professional. Again, if you do not abide by those rules and opt to be disruptive, we do have the ability uh, to place you permanently on mute, you will receive a verbal warning by partner staff before that happens. Again, uh, we won't kick you out of the session at that point. If, if we do have to follow that procedure, uh, you'll still be allowed to stay in the session. You'll be able to ask questions in the chat. To the employer rep, just know that at that point, you'll no longer have priority status, if you will. Uh, they'll respond to you as their time permits while they're you know, speaking with the other job seekers. Again, if you choose to use the chat to cause further disruption during that time, um, unfortunately at that point, uh, this partner staff will have the option to eject you from the session entirely. And the way Zoom works is if you are uh, booted from a session, unfortunately you will not be permitted re-entry into the session. Again, we typically don't have to use this procedure, but we just want folks to be aware that it is something that we do have in place if need be. 
One thing that I do want to note here again, uh, there will be a timer up in the right hand corner that'll let you folks know how much time is left in our session. Um, in this case, again, we're going to have 30 minutes set aside for our breakout rooms. After that 30th minute has elapsed, we'll have a 60 second countdown timer that'll just let you and the employer know that we have one minute left to wrap up whatever discussions are taking place uh, before we are automatically redirected back to the main room, which we're in now. Um, one final thing to note, <clears throat> excuse me, if you are have issues, um, having issues, excuse me, joining a breakout room on your own, you can always message me in the chat and let me know which employer you'd like to meet with. Uh, I can manually assign you to the room. You'll just want to be sure that when I do send you uh, the invite that you accept it and then you should be able to again join that room. So again, uh, the employers that we do have on the line here today are LER North America, Verizon, and the Chicago Transit Authority. If any of those employers again are of interest to you and you're having difficulties joining those rooms, again just throw those into the chat. Let me know who you'd like to meet with and I'll get you sent over. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and open up these rooms. And our rooms are now open. You should be able to join any of them that you see fit. Does look like our employers have joined their rooms. So feel free to join any of them that you'd like. And again, if you're having issues joining a room, uh, just message me and I'll get you sent there. Thank you. Hello, I cannot hear anything. They're actually, the reason you're not able to hear anything is because our breakout rooms are open. So you'll want to be sure to join a room if you wanna meet with any of our employers. You can do so by following uh, the screenshots or the instructions that are up on screen for you. 
Uh, if you're having issues joining a room, uh, let me know and I can send you to the employers uh, that we do have, whoever you're interested in meeting with. Um, we do have Elior North America on the line, Verizon and Chicago Transit Authority. So just let me know who you'd like to meet with if you're not able to join a room on your own and I'll get you sent there, okay? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, um, David, are you still there? Hi there, how can I help you? I'm sorry, um, I was looking for the Manor Care. Mm -hmm. Are they not there? Unfortunately, they were not able to join our session here today, uh, so they are not on the line. Okay, the only thing is I was interested, I was very much focused on that specific one because mm -hmm. I am a single mom. I have three kids in elementary school and I um, it's close to home. <clears throat> Understood. Um, so what I can go ahead and do is forward your information to the um, South Holland Manor rep. If you wanna go ahead and direct message me your information in the chat, um, yes, your email address and phone number, I will forward that information to that rep that was not able to join the session today. One yes, other sir. thing to note as well is I've also recorded this session. So if there's anything um, on that presentation that you'd like to go back and refer to later, once I yes. upload that, you'll be able to refer to that as well, okay? But just make sure you direct message me that. That way you're not sending it to everybody, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you.
I'm sorry. Um, David, do you have an email? I don't know how to send it. Yeah, no problem. So if you open up the chat feature on Zoom, it should be like a little um, blurb or something like that. You'll see like a bubble chat bubble. Okay. Yeah, if you click on that, are you able to see that? Yes, I see it. Okay, so there should be an option. You'll see when you open up that window to say two, and then there's like an arrow. You can drop down and look for somebody. If you want to send a direct message to them, you can select the individual. And my name is Daniel, so you'll see me there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, you're, no worries. You'll see my name there. Just click on it, and it'll send. You can then send me a direct message with your I would just send me your name, email, and then a phone number that I can forward to that um, employer rep. Hi, Sheila, just saw your message in the chat. Uh, Pat is actually, I believe she's acting as a, a volunteer in the, let me see here. It doesn't look like, unfortunately, we have Pat on the line still. She might have had to jump off for another meeting. Um, but I'll go ahead and um, send you that contact information for Shoshiwa, who wasn't able to join today. She's the actual like program administrator for okay. the construction opportunities. I'll go ahead and put that in the chat uh, to everyone. That way uh, everybody can see it, but you'll see it there. And then you can follow up by sending her an email. Again, she's the uh, project lead over there. So uh, literally there's nobody else above her that you can speak to. So that'll get you directly to her. And then if there's any questions you have, I'm sure she'd be more than happy to help, okay? Okay, thank you, Tony. Yep, no, no problem. I have an intern. Okay, that's it. Alrighty, Daniel, thank you so much. I sent it. Excellent, I see it here. So I'll get that sent over to uh, the employer rep. I believe her name is Constance. Constance. Uh, okay. Constance Joseph. So um, I will send that information over to her and then um, hopefully she should be back in contact with you soon, okay? Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yep, no problem. You have a great day. You too, bye-bye.
Okay, welcome back everyone. Looks like we have a majority of the folks back in from our breakout room. So welcome back. Uh, just a few things that I would like to know before we wrap things up here today. Um, again, as I've been stating, uh, we have been recording the session here today and I will be uploading this video uh, to the Illinois WorkNet YouTube channel under the virtual job fairs playlist within 48 hours. Uh, of this event, so you will be able to refer back to the video there. Um, again, if you if there's any information or content that you'd like to review prior to sending out your applications, um, again, a lot of those employers provided contact information for you to follow up with as well, so we would encourage you to refer back to those videos if there's anything you need to review. Uh, the next thing that I would like to state is that when you registered for the event, um, obviously you were asked to um, fill out Certain information, obviously, as far as contact information is concerned, like email address, phone number, and what have you, I will be forwarding those reports on to our workforce partners, uh, to the state agencies that partner with us, uh, with us for this event, excuse me, and as well as uh, the legislative offices as well. Also be sharing that with the employers too. So uh, for the employers that are on the line, you will have that information again within 48 hours to be able to follow up with um, any of the job seekers that did register for the event. With that stated, again, I'd like to give a huge shout out to the employers that joined us here today. Thank you for carving time out of your schedules to meet with us, present a wonderful information, and then also meet with job seekers. To the job seekers, thank you for uh, remaining patient, obviously, uh, meeting with the employers, asking a lot of great questions. To the elected officials, state agencies, workforce partners, um, you know, who joined us and, and brought this idea to us to make this event a reality. Thank you all too for your, um, you know, an exhaustible work effort. And uh, thank you so much for making this happen. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. Take care.